At first, North America's largest solar-powered pontoon boat makes a splash with both kids and educators. This is a boat that takes all of its energy from the sun and converts that into electrical power to propel the boat. It uses no gasoline, it is not a hybrid, it is a pure solar electric powered vessel. This is a small delicate lake, like many small delicate lakes, in fact Ontario has 250,000 such lakes. And this boat does not create any kind of a carbon footprint on the lake itself. The only type of energy that was expended was in its manufacture um, and some of that would have gone into the solar panels which takes about a year to recoup compared to a gasoline power. This boat is powered by photovoltaic cells which take the sun's energy and converts it directly into electricity which is then in turn stored into the batteries down below here. That energy is stored for when it's needed and when it's needed is of course when the boat is moving. So it collects the sun whether the boat's moving or not and then uses that energy to propel it when it needs to be moving. Our company is in the business of producing solar-powered boats that displace gas-powered boats in applications where they make perfect sense, such as here at Lake St. George. Um, for recreational boating, solar is beautiful for that. Another beautiful thing about solar is that it scales up. So if you want a people mover, like a ferry, for example, to go over to Toronto Islands, solar is the natural choice. It's powered by batteries, and uh, as we just learned when we got out there, it was quieter than a canoe. And um, I think that that's also explaining and, and uh, taking the right move because uh, it's showing that you don't have to have emissions um, to have a boat. It's an excellent opportunity for them to have a hands-on experience. And the staff here have been absolutely fantastic in bringing them around and showing them around. And they're, they're, they're limited with the opportunities they can get within the city of Toronto. To come up here is an absolutely fantastic opportunity for them and for us. We get to see the kids in a different different light. We've been on the boats. We've been actually doing some lake study, looking at the, the, the what are the healthy what are the attributes of a healthy lake system. So we've been actually looking at measuring the deep water, the temperatures, the oxygen content, all kinds of real neat stuff for the kids. Some of our budding marine biologists in our class are really, really finding fascinating experiences, getting involved and getting their hands dirty. An absolutely fantastic experience. It's really interesting because we've never, we've never been on a pontoon before, especially since it's a solar panel, uh, solar powered. Um, it, it makes the experience more interesting. We learned that uh, this is a kettle lake made of uh, the glaciers that dug into the ground and melted away. So we learned about like different chemicals and germs that are in the water and about the different fish that swim in here and how deep the water is. It was pretty cool. In my mind, the number one thing we're trying to do is just connect kids with nature. So often people come and they see environments like this and they think we're in romantic spots in Northern Ontario. So the main thing for us is to let them know that these wild places do exist in an urban setting and just to give them a sense of what's going on under the surface. So we're looking at some of the things not visible to the naked eye as far as doing some chemical tests, looking at temperature, things like that. Um, but then there's also the whole living end of things. So we're looking at fish, we're looking at birds, we're looking at microscopic plants, things like that. So much of what they're doing in Toronto, I find, they need to know that these places exist in their own backyards and there are creeks and there are ponds and there are lakes right down in Toronto. And so we want to engage them to uh, not only appreciate what's there for them, but also to empower them to protect it, for sure. And I think that if they have a better understanding of just the basics and how it works and how the ecosystem stays healthy, it really helps to encourage them to want to take ownership to protect it. <laughs>